Hello, hello, this is Humberto and this is the HVAC, it's my channel. Today we're going to be talking about heat loads and specifically internal loads. All right, so let's get into it. So we're going to start with the following. Any, so we have two methods of calculation. So two, actually two fields. Number one is the residential and number two is the non-residential. All right, so we're going to put that in yellow. So that's going to be for the non-residential right here, non residential okay non-residential residential okay and also we have the residential residential okay so here we go so for the non-residential okay the first step if it, when designing the ducts and everything, it's always the ventilation, calculation of the ventilation. And number two, it comes the heat loads. So for the heat loads, how do you calculate actually? Okay, so when you are doing a non-residential building, you have different methods, which is which could be possibly see the ASHRAE. You can resort to ASHRAE, okay, ASHRAE fundamentals in non-residential or you you can also check for light commercial manual n from aka right so ashray fundamentals or manual l or manual n for light commercial from aka acca number two if we're talking about residential the same thing we we, we can do from ashray okay ashray fundamentals and then manual j manual j Okay, so in this case, we're going to be talking about re non-residential and we're going to do, be doing for ASHRAE, okay? So let's do this like this, non-residential, okay? So ASHRAE. So when we're talking about heat loads, so let's do in here heat loads, see? Heat loads, okay? Heat loads. Okay, so we have four main important parts, which are the following. So number one, we will talk about the envelope. Okay, heat loads, heat loads because of the envelope. So that includes the walls, the windows, the doors, the skylights, everything that is it's in regard to the envelope. So number two, it's gonna be for internal, internal loads. Okay, number three is going to be for infiltration, infiltration, okay, and number four, the system itself, the equipment that you selected, system or the ductwork, okay. So for the envelope, you know, windows and everything, but this video is actually about internal loads. For internal loads, specifically, we have people, we have lights, and we have equipment, and appliances okay let's put in here equipment okay infiltration system envelope that can be for other videos okay so in this case for internal loads for people actually what happens is the following that depends on the activity but usually for people what we put is this so i'm gonna put that, that as pink since this is very important so if we have a person right here right so how many types of heat are we going to have we're going to have two actually two number one is going to be sensible so let's put sensible heat for the people okay and we're going to have the latent latent heat okay so don't forget this is people load people load so we're, we're so in the heat load calculation we're talking about the people load okay so sensible how much is the sensible usually when you don't have a reference you can easily put 250 BTUs per hour for sensible and you can put 200 BTUs per hour per latent so there you go you have your sensible and latent people load so what is the sensible the sensible is because of the change of temperature and latent is because whenever you talk so for example anytime you're breathing right or you are talking see you have humidity in here you have water here so that's why you have latent load sensible is the change in temperature in other words you are dissipating you are actually 
maintaining your body temperature. So if it's hot outside, you are sweating or it, it, this, this really depends on the metabolic rate. All right. So that's pretty much the parameters. But in, but also in this video, I want to point out why is it 250 and why is it 200 BTUs per hour for the people load? Okay, so this actually depends on the time of a type of activity. And I'm gonna put that in here as, um, let's put as an orange. Degree of activity or type of activity? Type of activity. Activity. And where can you find that? You don't have to do the research because Ashray already did that research for you. They just want you to use their table. So Ashray table one, chapter uh, chapter 18 of Ashray fundamentals, fundamentals, show you a table. So in that table, so as we can see in here, I'm gonna put that in pink too again. So in pink, there we go. We have in here, for example, as average, see? Right here, moderately, active office work, for example, see? So if the activity is active office work and then location, office, hotel, apartments, you have a sensible heat of 250 and you have a latent heat of 200. So 250 plus 200 is actually 450 as total heat, okay? So usually, especially um, in residential, when we're doing house uh, design and we have one bedroom apartment, we're gonna take, we're gonna put one person in that bedroom apartment and so we usually put 250 and 200. That's how it, depending on the client, sometimes they want to increase that load. Now, if you are in a gym or if you are, for example, in a, in, in, in a dancing club, see, for example, in dancing hall, you have 305 and you have 545. So again, that depends on the metabolic rate. Okay, so what we're gonna put in here is just a little bit of the explanation why this is 250, why this is 200 BTUs per hour. And this is actually for the type of activity. This means for active office work. Let's put in here active office work. It's an example, active office work. Okay, okay, so now we're gonna change again to green and see, this depends we're gonna put depends on the metabolic rate. Me, how do you how do you spell that? Metabolic rate. Metabolic rate. Again, Ashley did already the research. But what does that mean? So it depends on the metabolic rate because the body, see, the body temperature temperature is trying to be maintained, right? Body temperature. I'm gonna put this as BT, body temperature. So the body temperature has to be constant, right? Constant. And usually it's be, it remains between, you know, um, 95, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. So anytime that the body temperature is be, uh, higher, then the body try, tries to maintain that temperature. So you're gonna, you're gonna have heat loss, all right? So in other words, we're gonna put in here a small rule. So if the temperature of the body is greater than the body temperature, see, body temperature, you're gonna be exposed to hyperthermia. Hyperthermia, okay? Why? Because there's not enough heat loss, not enough heat loss of, your, of the body, not enough heat loss so i want to emphasize in here so if you are a contractor or if you are an engineer and uh, you you might be wondering why do i need to know this it's 
to have better information on our assumptions. So wouldn't it be better to be a contractor and then say, okay, the heat load in here is 250 BTUs per hour, and this is because of the metabolic rate based on ash rate fundamentals, table number one, because we're trying to maintain the body temperature constant. Otherwise we're gonna have hyperthermia or we're gonna have the opposite, which is hypothermia, see? So it's just extra information that allows us to have more information and more educated answers, okay? So this is for insufficient heat loss. Not enough, see, hypothermia is too much heat loss. Too much heat loss, heat loss. Because you're getting, you're getting cold, all right? All right, so now, there is also another table from ASHRAE, which is based on the metabolic heat generation, okay? So that other table is table number four, and that also depends on the activity, right? But that's going deeper into details. So that, we're not gonna cover that right now, but this is just gonna be our, our example for this, uh, for, the, for, for other videos. It's like the heads up. Okay, so lastly, why, why people load is very important? Because for example, if you have a large office, see, usually the architect provides the drawings, right? So, and the architect is gonna tell you, this is an open office, you're gonna have one, you're gonna have two, you're gonna have three, desk, and he's gonna give you chairs. One, two chairs, one, one and two chairs, see? and then there's gonna give you one and two chairs, for example. So what you're gonna be doing is counting the number of chairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're gonna have number of people, see, number of people, that's gonna be equal to nine. And this number nine is very important. For what? Number nine is gonna be for two parts. This is gonna be very important for ventilation, so you wanna calculate the ventilation and then you're gonna want to calculate the heat load, okay? So people, lo I'm gonna call, call it people load. People heat load. And now you know how much is gonna be an estimation of the people load. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna have the total, or you, if you don't have your sensible, 250 times nine. So if we're gonna do that quick calculation, so we're gonna do in here sensible, is gonna be equal to nine times 250 BTUs per hour. How much is sensible? So that's gonna be, let's see, nine times 250, that's gonna be 200, 2,250 BTUs per hour, right? What about latent? So for latent, again, so nine times 200, so that's gonna be nine times 200, and that's gonna be 18, see? 1,800 BTUs per hour, so that, and now whenever you have a big gym or a dancing hall or a multi-purpose event hall, you're not gonna have like nine people, you're gonna have 89 people, 100 people, and this heat load is big. And that's why we're talking in this video about people load, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit the like button and subscribe and leave any comment, all right? Thank you for watching HVAC is my channel.